Hey guys, this is going to be a quick uh, review of NXT UK Prelude. Uh, this was a special episode of NXT UK that did yesterday. Um, <laughs> kind of uh, odd that they would do this in the middle of a crazy-ass week for wrestling fans, but... Yeah, NXT UK Prelude, I was kind of excited for this. I looked at the card and I thought, yeah, this looks pretty good. It's only an hour long, so if you have uh, Peacock in the United States or if you are using the WWE Network elsewhere, I recommend checking this out. It's only an hour long. You can get through this one pretty easily. So, uh, yeah, let's get to this one. So, I've seen NXT TakeOver Stand and Deliver Night 1. Haven't seen Night 2 yet, but I'll do a separate recording uh, slash review for both nights of Stand and Deliver so I can get a little bit more time to talk about them equally instead of like putting it into one big ass video so yeah let's talk about it so nxt uk i don't follow the brand weekly or anything but from what i've seen it looks like a brand that despite the controversy around the uk wrestling scene after speaking out last year like the brand itself it doesn't seem that bad it, it's kind of similar to 205 live in 2018 where you'll at least get one gem of a matchup each week on TV. And I haven't seen all of the matches that I wanted to see, but from what I've seen, it's pretty good. And uh, there's some interesting, promising young talent on the UK brand, and hopefully, you know, uh, the UK wrestling scene can can um, build itself back up after WWE rated the talent there, and after from speaking out, and then the closures, and... Everything like that. But yeah, pretty good show here uh, from NXT UK. So we opened up with the uh, NXT UK Heritage Cup number one contenders match. Tyler Bate versus Noam Dar. Um, I really love the Heritage Cup slash British rules uh, concept slash idea. So basically, it's British rounds. I, I, let me remember the details correctly. So it's six rounds, three minutes each. So about an 18 minute time limit. Um, it's contested under two out of three falls. You must win by pinfall or submission, um, or knockout. A knockout or disqualification can end the match. Um, the person who leads ahead by the end of the time limit, like let's say if in this case, let's say if Tyler Bate went all the way with just one point, then Tyler would have won by the end of the match. Then that man would become the winner. Um, a pinfall or submission ends the round and starts the next one. So like in this matchup, Tyler won within the first minute and then they ended the first round. So it moved on to round two. So yeah, I really like this concept. It's kind of like, it kind of reminds me of like what Ring of Honor is doing right now with the peer division and it's working out really well. And yeah, I was really excited for this one. You know, Noam Dar, I think he, he's a good wrestler, but uh, just kind of average as a personality. I haven't been watching all of his um, weekly segments of, uh, what was it called? The Supernova Sessions, uh, I've heard it's uh, pretty good, but I'm just not really sold on him as a talent or a personality. Similar to Kip Sabian in AEW, he's like, he's a good athlete and all, but just, what else is new? What can you bring to the table? So, yeah, Noam, good wrestler, but just nothing really stand out about him. Uh, but this was really good. Um, so Tyler won the first fall in the first, uh, uh, earned the first fall in the first round. Um pretty good and then i think he went another three rounds until uh noam dar got the got the second fall and then it was uh, decided before the the time limit expired and yeah really good stuff good technical wrestling great work on the knee by dar there was an awesome counter where tyler you know how he runs into the ropes and then like springs off you know neck springs his neck off the ropes to hit the lariat well he tried to do that and then uh, Dar caught him by the leg and got him into a heel hook to make him tap out. That was great. Uh, there were times where it was kind of stagnant a little early on, but I really enjoyed the matchup uh, once the pace picked up within the final two or three rounds. Um, within the final two rounds, I think. So yeah, really, really, really good match. Tyler Bate wins. He gets a shot at A-Kid for the uh, Heritage Cup Championship. I think that could be a great match. I really like their first one from December. That was a great match. There's some other great NXT UK matches I'll talk about throughout the video, but yeah, uh, that was a great match, and I think whenever they do have a rematch, I think it could be just as good, if not better. Uh, but yeah, uh, really good match to open up. Then uh, we had Mako Satamura and Emilia McKenzie versus NXT UK Women's Champion uh, Kaylee Ray and Isla Dawn. Good match here. Uh, I think they had a confrontation the week before that saw uh, Amelia, formerly Millie McKenzie, make her return. 
I think she was on, not an excursion, but like she took a break or something like that. So she returned last, uh, I think it was last week or two weeks ago to set up this tag match for this show. And uh, yeah, pretty solid matchup here. Uh, this was coming off of the uh, uh, Satamora Kaylee Ray UK Women's Championship match. I think it was like three weeks ago or something like that, or like early last month. That was a great match. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. It's definitely worth watching. Uh, one of the better uh, I would say that's probably the best uh, match of uh, Kaylee's title reign, and I was surprised that she actually retained, because I thought she would have uh, dropped it to Mako, and then Mako dominate the division for a little bit until somebody um, beats her, kind of like what they did with uh, Io Shirai and Asuka in NXT. So, yeah, uh, that was a great match, and this one was solid, just good, solid, fast-paced action, back-and-forth stuff. Uh, in the end, uh, Amelia actually rolled up uh, Isla for the victory. Mako blocked uh, Kaylee from entering the ring uh, to break up the pinfall. So yeah, good solid matchup. Nothing spectacular, but it was good. And then the main event, the NXT UK uh, Championship match. Walter defending against Rampage Brown. Never seen Rampage Brown before, but apparently he's like a two-decade-plus-long veteran of uh, wrestling. And uh, this was my first opportunity to see him. I heard he had some good matches in NXT UK, specifically one with uh, Dave Mastiff, or as Sanders Robin would call him, Dave Mastiff, <laughs> uh, a few weeks ago that I heard was really good. Walters obviously had an epic title reign. I'll talk about the Tommaso Ciampa match in my next review, but yeah, uh, this was great. Just hard-hitting, uh, intense, brutal fight. Between the two was really short, like 13 minutes. I mean, it was like it was about as long as the the match Walter had with A Kid back in January. It was really short, but it was just action packed, intense, violent, great strikes between the two men. Um, a pretty sick power slam off the top rope by Rampage to to Walter. He pretty much steamrolled and beat the shit out of Walter in certain case on certain occasions, but Walter just coming up with some brutal strikes to chop him down. And in the end, picked up the victory to retain the championship. Great match here. I definitely recommend checking this one out. So yeah, this show was really good. Uh, sorry if this video wasn't that long. But yeah, uh, really good match. I, I mean, really good show. And I do recommend checking it out. It's only an hour. You can check it out on Peacock or on the WWE Network. Uh, I'd say it's worth checking out. So good stuff. Uh, stick around for my TakeOver Stand and Deliver reviews.